choose, and then they get wrecked by whatever teams that they do choose. Uh, hopefully that is not going to be the case for either of these teams, but let's talk about LFY and Newbie. The last time they met up is actually in MDL, where LFY knocked out Newbie from the MDL tournament. That was about a month ago, so there's a little bit of bad blood, but obviously they're both representing China, and there, there's you know a bit of camaraderie uh, going on between the two teams. To me, the big thing in this tournament, and the big thing always for LFY, is whether Inflame is on point or not. I believe uh, the opening match that we casted of them, Inflame went off. He was the highest net worth in a, in a game where he played Doom. And checking on his statistics uh, over the 10 games, it helps that his team is 10-0. Uh, but he's also a big contributor to that 10-0. And I'm expecting him to do extremely well here today as well. Draft underway already. Night Stalker is the first grab. Newbie going for the big team fight. Sand King and Puck are secured. You mentioned Kaka. It feels like he's played 8 billion Sand King games, to quote you. Uh, <laughs> I think that is relatively accurate. He's played a lot of the Sand King. And yes. They grab it early here. They also secure the Puck. Uh, I would say very frequently this is an offlaner for Newbie. I would also say you probably want to beware the Drow pick, uh, as they can run it for KP there. but. Uh, that'll be an opportunity for LGD Forever Young to deal with in the second phase. Uh, with the Night Stalker pick, the most common partner is probably Batrider. That's a very big tempo control duo. Uh, but that's not to say LGD Forever Young have to go for it. They have certainly for sure. picked up things like the Doom Brainer for Inflame that we were touching on. Uh, and there's lots of other options. I really want to know, do we get a Super Pugna, though? I, I love his Pugna. It's probably the most impressive one I've seen in the tournament. Uh, and I think it just it's a great hero. Uh, in this meta right now. Sure. Uh, the Superman Pugna that somebody did the art for us the other day. He went like 13-2 or something. But oh, it's going to be a Nature Prophet set that most likely will be in Flames Hero. But we've seen other teams kind of play in, in different roles. Team Liquid being uh, the one that you know plays it sometimes in the safe lane. But if I may, I want to talk a little bit about Newbie's choice of the Radiant versus Dire. If possible, they would always, always go on the Dire side. In fact, in MDL, I think they were Dire 17 games out of, or 14 games out of 17, or something ridiculous. Like, they, they are a lopsided Dire team for two reasons. First, their Kaka Sanking playstyle. He loves to roam from top to middle. And having the Dire side really allows you to have the proper angles to make that gank work. If you flip it on the Radiant side, that, that gank it becomes a lot, a lot harder. So it really helps them to allow SC to snowball, and SC is definitely a very snowballish mid player. Number two is that they feel that traditionally Dire always had the Roche advantage, now a lot less so, but they still kind of, they play Dire so often back in the days that they just feel more comfortable on the Dire side. At least this is according to the, the people I've talked to from the newbie organization. So it's, it's a side that they tend to always gravitate towards to if the enemy gives them. The only team that I've noticed that always snaps the Dire side away from them is OG. OG, whenever they face against Newbie, they always take Dire away and then they force them to play on Radiant. And I think Newbie's win rate on the Radiant side is actually drastically less. So moving forward, I, I, I don't know if this is an important thing enough for, for teams to take note of, but certain teams already have. Uh, but LFY is going to give them the Dire side here and might just give it to them next game as well. But enough of that jazz. We'll see a Sven ban now from yeah. LGD Forever Young. So interesting to see the Sven ban. Uh, obviously, you know, he has certain situations where he shines. The plus armor is great against physical damage heavy strats. Uh, he is one of the stronger just late game farming carries right now. And of course, fantastic against Bristleback in particular. Uh, but none of that really clearly like visible yet is something that LG Forever Young want to go for. So mm. we'll, we'll have to see why Sven. As they do ban the draw, I love that ban. I think Newbie would have happily taken it to ensure that their puck can have a powerful start. Whatever happened to the, the Oracle, man? Remember the, the MD tournament that we casted? It was Oracle every single game. He was such a big part of the saving squad. Ooh. Yeah, I don't know. The Oracle was had his little his little moment in the sun, but it was a moment, Lumi, and it's gone and then now. Quickly back to the dank seller. Like that that <laughs> is it. We're gonna see the witch doctor. Um also a, a surprising thing to point out is that we don't have a faceless void ban yet. I'm sure newbie would love to combo the, the KP void into the Witch Doctor Ultimate. I feel like they want KP to be playing the Puck, personally. SC could play it too. Like, That's so. true. We'll see. Uh, they are very much lacking any sort of reliable damage. It's just all mid-game magic damage for now. So they'll need at least one, possibly two. 
more sustainable late game type heroes if they want to take this to that stage. Yep. As for LGD Forever Young, they've got their vision game and their mobility under control. Still looking to unravel what the overall approach to the game will be. Are they going to push hard? Are they just going to focus on ganking? Are they going to pick Dragonite for super? Or Pugna? I, I think I like I would like Dragonite more than Pugna here, especially because you know that Sanking is going to be... Sacrilege! <laughs> it's because Sanking is going to be ganking mid so hard that I, I think if Pugna eats a Burrow Strike, he's very likely to die. Where Sanking most likely just strikes it off. Uh, the mid lane matchup, looking at DK versus Puck, is pretty okay. We're going to see the Weaver first, and that is going to be the carry here for Monet. Interesting grab. Puck historically is pretty good against Weaver. That's almost inviting a Void pick, too. Like, you just chrono him. You have the Death Ward. But it does fit the... It fits in nicely with the Night Stalker NP, as it, it encourages the spread the map offense, pick-offs, mobility. Sure. Poke newbie from 20 different directions at once. What will newbie go for? They they did go for the witch doctor. You know, it's really been mainly the C special. Uh, obviously, RR loves the hero. Uh, we also saw it from DJ DJ as well. So outside of that region, witch doctor is not seen as much play. It's outside of the region is more of like, hey, can we combo it with somebody else? Or are we very interested in the voodoo restoration push, that kind of stuff? We're going to see the Chaos Knight, a hero that has been fairly popular in your LGDs, in your LFYs, in your IGs. They see it as a hero that it's almost cheese in terms of his damage output. Um, and I believe the last time we've seen it, I think we, we had a good uh, crack or laugh over it is that uh, Moogie skilled a uh, Chaos Strike at level 1. <laughs> And he was just going in the lane, just thwacking at people. We'll see if he's going to go for that skill build, but... Full damage illusion seems pretty good to me. Rubik. Well, GD grabbing the Rubik. Wow, some, some fantastic spell steals available already. Yep. Um, in, in the Chinese metagame, Rubik is seen as a counter to Sanking because Burrow Strike is so readily available, um, and you just basically have a Sanking on your team. It's just that I feel like Rubik as a hero generally don't like to face things I could get on top of him very quickly. And now you have Sand King, Puck, and Chaos Knight. Especially Chaos Knight. Can you just imagine he gets reality rifted, he just dies. So I, I find this Rubik pick to be extremely curious, but DDC is one of the best Rubik players. So I expect his position to be on point. And yeah. he won't get reality rifted. <laughs> Well, they're 10 and 0, so I expect everything to be on point <laughs> from LGD Forever Young. <laughs> oh, I, I do forget to mention, you know, Night Stalker is such a common pick, but uh, this is the hero that LFY loves to pick up the most. This is their best hero uh, in terms of... Do you think it's better than the, the Afu or Spirit nowadays? It, I think the Afu or Spirit is always first phase banned that he never gets it. So, like, I guess this is the second best. Okay. Yeah. The first best that they can actually get. So we're now looking for the superhero to round things out. So if it's not Pugna and Dragon Knight, Lumi. Oh, Dragon Knight's banned out. So if it's not Pugna, Lumi, what's it going to be? Um, he also has a very good Storm that is still available in the pool, although somewhat dangerous Storm game into the Puck. It's going to be a Medusa. Ooh, that's surprising. Very good against the CK, I Now, suppose. granted, we only got to cast one series of LFY, so, you know, maybe they've been running it. I could quickly check out. Whether they have or not. That is interesting. Good against the Chaos Knight illusions. Ten seconds remaining. With your, your Stone Gaze and maybe your Aghanim's Medusa, that is certainly the build now in China. Yep. So I think maybe they're just selecting this as the Chaos Knight. Well, uh, that's the thing, right? The other day we had a, a different Medusa game that we casted, and we, we were talking about, you know, whether it's going to be the utility of Medusa. We've seen, we seen maybe do it for LGD where he goes, like, he goes... I think Blamel Lincoln's Ags into Hex. <laughs> it's like, where's the damage? There is no damage. And we're going to see the, the standard Medusa counter, the MP Tornado. tornado. Yeah. All right. I think we are getting another Quaswex Invoker with this. Well, I, I think it's not necessarily that important to rush the, the, the Quaswex because by the Medusa time... The, also takes a while to come online. Right. By the time the fights actually happen, your your, your Aghanim Scepter and your Midas will carry you to, to a point where your MP Tornado is enough to actually make Medusa's life difficult. Uh, right now, it is Inflame selecting on Medusa. 
And Flame is normally the offlane player for Alfly, so I find this quite curious. That is very curious. Are they running a mid nature's profit, or are they swapping up the lanes, or Maybe. are they just trolling us? We'll know soon. Ten seconds remaining. We'll know soon. Five seconds remaining. Anything unusual you expect to see out of the laning setup here, Lin? Are you expecting a very standard KP offlane puck mid S triple C invoker and safe tri lane? Yeah, there there might be a wrinkle in, in terms of like lane dodging. Looks like the two two players swaps it back. Yeah, we might see something like uh, a one v one between the MP and the puck, and then uh, a tri lane of sorts to to run at each other. That's more up to LFY's decision. I, I think newbie will just play it super standard, like you said, S invoker mid, KP puck offlane, and then. You know, the trialing with the Chaos Knight. All right, get your Pog Champs ready, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for the undefeated LGD Forever Young 10 and 0 to take on the solid Sintu Newbie. I think this Battle is, for supremacy. Yeah, this is going to be a test for, for LFY, right? If they beat Newbie here 2 0, then they're looking like they could finish the group stage in a perfect fashion. And this is, I mean, finishing the group stage in, in, in perfect score is one of the rare, rare feats. That happens in TI, you know, once a couple of years. So many fun things to look forward to in this game. Obviously, the Kaka Sand King, always a sight to behold. And, you know, the Afu Night Stalker, equally impressive in his own right to very high impact four positions to keep an eye on. You've got the S Triple C Invoker, the always exciting do submit. <laughs> That's the thing about Super, right? Is he he, how, he, does he doesn't not get play to play exciting. the flashy heroes very often, but somehow he makes big plays with them all the same. If you took, if you were told that you you play Ti and you do super well at Ti, but all you could do is play Dragonite, Patience from Zoe. are you gonna be complaining? <sighs> Absolutely not. There you go. Like was Universe complaining when he had to play Darkseer every game, but EG was winning. Almost um, every game. Yeah. Right. Yeah, there you go. If you have to play those heroes and you lose, though, <laughs> then you got problems. It's like, Captain, we need to talk. All right, looks like we're going to see a little bit of a challenge coming in for Newbie. They are rushing towards a rune, and Super, is he going to give it up? Is he going to go for it? Uh, he gives it up. Wise choice. Newbie flexing on LFY here early. Good start for them with that. Extra bounty rune pickup. They'll go back and collect theirs as well. So it's going to be the offlane nature's profit for Inflame. Now this I'm really going to keep my eyes on because coming into this tournament, Inflame was the weak point of yeah. LFY. He was dying a lot in the offlane. He had slow starts, uh, and oftentimes like he was just a non-factor. But 10 and 0. Obviously, he's had a better performance. We got to witness his doom, where he just crushed his lane. He did get help that time. He was safe lane too in that game. Yeah, he got a lot more support. Now he's a sacrificial offlane nature's prophet up against a decent kill combo here. So let's see if he's able to stay alive. Meanwhile, for LFY, the early pressure is going to come in mid. They get that initial harass off on S Triple C. He'll quickly eat his tree. Kaka there to mirror Afu's rotation. So we'll likely see the dual lanes in mid, at least for now. Another side of newbie in the offlane, KP as the puck. He is going to be up against. A Weaver Rubik duo, which is pressuring him pretty hard early. Doesn't have they orb get the anymore. Lift off. KP might be giving up the first blood here. Pops the fairy fire. Salves Salve up as well. He's blown a lot of regen, and with that, orbing away to safety, he will escape. But that is really going to put him on the back foot in this lane. Yeah, the damage has already been done. Fairy fire and Salve being used, and he's not even back to full HP. Also had a panic buy a TP throw, which, you know, going to slow down the regen that might help him avoid going home and. Just getting boots. The, the yeah. boots that potentially prevent you from dying. Yeah, so. he, he, you know, used orbs for a CS and, like, he felt good about himself. And then recognizing that LFY just jumped straight on him. So, you know, back to your point. I feel like both of the offlaners in this game is going to have a really tough time. It might be one of those situations, like, who's going to do worse? This is truly a mirror game for, for all the lanes, all the rotations. Ooh, nice regen route being selected. Kaka is going to get it canceled immediately, but... At least good, got a good half second off. Oh, and Flames coming in, wants to try and punish this. Doesn't actually have a sprout, so. More of a taunting maneuver, if anything. 
is leaving a 1v1 bottom now as uh, the Rubik, uh, uh, actually, no, he's, yeah, he's coming engaged. back. Yeah. Like he wanted to rotate for a moment there. So yeah, no major lane swaps as of yet. Afu just continues to roam. Kaka continues to match his movements. Yep. And as far as the mid lane goes, that's triple C catching up nicely. Super had that early advantage. And generally this is what we will see with the Dusa is in most matchups, she'll tend to struggle a little bit, you know, as the, you know, like let's say that three to like eight minute Mark hits, and then as the Mystic Snake gets maxed out, you start having some stacks. She catapults herself back into the supremacy when it comes to net worth. I wouldn't even say three to eight minute mark. I think as soon as she pick up the level five uh, and level three Mystic Snakes, the the damage that it does a surprisingly high amount, especially against a, a slow moving mid hero. Um, you could bounce it off, you know, the creep wave a little bit, and then Invoker is going to take a big, big hit. This really sucks for Kaka. He's trying to trade blows with Afu, but does not have the point in cost to get, so he's just losing those trades every time. Yeah. With the lower armor, the worst base damage, like, that's just not effective from him. You know, trading hits with Cossack uh, Finale has been nerfed in the recent patch anyways, so it's not even a big part of the Sanking game plan, recently at least. Um... I think Sanking is more more important about roaming. We do even see Sanking taking that sandstorm relatively early nowadays to yeah. stack camps. I think Zai is probably the one who does it the most. Like yep. you'll even start with it at level one and just jungle. Yep. Obviously, Invoker wants a little help mid. So that one. Trying to threaten Super. Super gonna keep that mana shield off unless he really needs it. So. Early days here in the lanes, but it seems, for the most part, fairly even in terms of the farm trading that's happening. The first nighttime hits, though, and as the wolf howls, Afu gets aggressive. Where yep. will he go? What opportunities will he find? There was a ward seeing that Afu rotating towards that direction, so I, I think SC is aware. Look at the position that SC is in right now. He is playing more on the south side, next to his tower, expecting a stab coming in from the top. So. Of course, Sanking is also revealing the fact that there is. It's not really a possible kill, but some good harass could be here for Newbie. Don't even have the mana for a Sunstrike right now. Afu will journey north. It's the Dire Ward that you were mentioning, but it hasn't... Oh, now it does. Sees him. Yep. As he lurks near the Bounty Rune spawn. He will be backing away. So I wonder, in a broad theory sense, like, nothing's happening. You know, nobody's really dying. Sure, KP's having a tough time, and it looks like he is forced away again. Does this, do you think, favor one team over the other, or do you think it's actually pretty even? Are they going to make a move here on Kaka? We'll get forced back. Hmm. I, I don't know. Actually, I think both teams have their power spikes, so I don't necessarily feel like it favors either team. It feels pretty even, yeah? Yeah, oh, like... The, they're making it go up top. Trying yeah. to jump. Okay. Yeah, he's fine. <laughs> Nothing happens, yeah. Making me nervous, Lumi. Um, yeah, I mean, both teams have their power spikes, right? Like, newbies, get, once they get their blink daggers and levels on the sand cane and the puck, speaking of that puck, mm -hmm. very heavy bullying. As they are going to rotate three on mid, they wanted to send potentially an S triple C. DDC trying to maneuver into position. There is a dire ward here. They know DDC's it's here. out of this rotation. He might get caught anyway, though. But with the profit coming in, that's the plus one that I'm not sure newbie was aware of. As Super has that early point in stone gaze. Corrals as Triple C gets the kill, turns on the mana shield to ensure his retreat simultaneously. Kaka's got a TP out. Newbie knew this was coming, but they just didn't bank on the NP plus one factor as Faith shrines up, but sticks around. Now trying oh. to the Ancient Deny, not gonna happen. A big win for LFY. That was huge, the fact that he activated his shrine and did nothing. And now this wave is gonna get denied as well. All right, this is bad news bear. They, I mean, they just, I think they just didn't realize that there was the NP plus one factor or weren't really considering it because yep. they saw the Rubik there. They know the Night Stalker's been in their jungle. Like, there's nothing really mysterious about that gang. Bottom, they're going to make a go on KP here. He, does he have the orb? He will run up, but he's going to go down the bug, giving vision. Kaka is going to burrow strike tower. Shouldn't be enough to kill Afu. All of a sudden, after a slow start, LFY gets three kills, forces out multiple teleport swirls. And I think this is the start that Alphi needed and wanted because look at their core heroes. You got a Weaver, you got a Dusa, heroes that don't start the game, you know, coming out of the gates exploding. So having this uh, little bit of beneficial start is fairly good for these type of heroes.
So what's next for LFY? Just keep on farming? Is there... Yeah, keep on farming, pretty oh, much. Are the, what are their timings? Because I think it's kind of obvious for newbie, like, you want Invoker to just farm, you find Sunstrike kills, you get your Blink Daggers on your key team fight supports, and, you know, you... Ah, oh, slash utility heroes, like the Puck, and you fight around that. Uh, but talk to me about... Talk me through LFY's strategy. I think LFY is just going to look to defend all of their objective. Um, Weaver, as well as Dusa, a very strong core support in. Get off a swarm or stone gaze and help out the ally. I don't think they're actively looking for any kind of, let's say, five man smoking into the enemy jungle or any type of that kind of movement. So, hunker down, farm, and be boring, but you know, win the game. Also, largely, it comes down to what kind of items that Inflame is going to go for. Is it going to be, you know, going for the ultra greedy? Is it going to be Hanamitis? Are we going to fight more often with like face drums or somewhere in between with something like Orchids? I think, I think his item choice is going to largely depend. He's porting around the map and taking bounty routes right now, though. That's one small thing that Nature's Prophet can do now, which wasn't relevant before. Just a tiny bit of extra economic damage for him. Offer against the team is Kaka. Gets clipped by the swarm here. Monet's on the chase, and it looks like they do want to pursue. KP, however, in position. Potentially, they're trying to kill off that wow. pesky bug. The auto techs are really hitting him hard. Now the coil under tower. I believe he does have the time lapse up, though. Ooh. And he will just zip away mid burrow strike. Unafraid. Does force out the coil. Yep, certainly a good trade for the time lapse. Meanwhile, newbie. Their big siege engine will be Moogie here, at least through the early game. And he is already getting to work on the wave. Ask a, a bouncing as they try to clean up these creeps. Start to apply pressure to that tier one tower, match the pressure that Elf Y is inserting elsewhere. This Chaos Knight is not an RNG god, at least not yet. Only got the one illusion, but trying to move in off Boo to get the minus armor. Perhaps he's overextending. TK is a tanky hero, but he gets silenced. He gets controlled. It might be daytime, but this Night Stalker don't care. Elf Y. Clean him up. Yep, four and zero right now for LFY. Newbie, you know, going for much of much more early game timing. Unfortunately, so far not on the board yet. Some of the critical core heroes, such as the Puck, struggling on the bottom side of the map. So his blink dagger timing is going to get heavily delayed. Sanking obviously roaming, so he's not going to get his blink dagger anytime soon. I wonder where is going to be Newbie's first point of like contention. Are they going to? What do they actually need? Blink daggers are not going to come anytime soon, so let's I, forget I about that. Are, I think you are waiting for that, though. So. Oh, how, how else are they going to take fight? I mean, they're going to have to farm for the next 10 minutes to get that. And I think for LFY, that's it's, it's exactly what they want. It's basically smoke ganks, then. Like, yeah. I don't really see another way for newbie to start fights. They they can smoke, try to set up some sunstrike kills. That's really the dream scenario. Uh, problem is, LFY are so mobile that you can easily suddenly find yourself facing four or five heroes with the potential for the Night Stalker to rotate in as it is. Uh, I imagine we'll see that point in darkness relatively soon and the next nighttime is coming, but there has been a smoke rotation. LFY descending on Moogie. They sprout him up. He tries to pull him out, but they lock him down with the lift, pulling him back. He gets off the stun here. It's only the two second one and Monet joins the party with the double damage run on Super. They chew through the Night of Chaos and they will kill him off. Yep. And even though LFY is not exactly the best pushing lineup, they get a kill, they move on top and they have a double damage on Super. I think newbie are in this mindset of we have to be surgical when we go for picks. We have to be very quick because of that mobility. So we really want our blinks. We really just want to farm right now. But LFY are just putting you know, foot on the pedal and applying the gas and saying, no, we're going to fight you right now before yeah. you come online. I mean, you say that they're putting the foot on the gas, but they're... It's a freaking Rubik. <laughs> you know, it's a profit. There, it's not a spare breaker running at you or it's not, you know... Those kind of crazy type it's of heroes. It's a deceptive type of... It, it's more the fact that LFY is just being at the right place with the right numbers. They're, you know? they're pushing in on Faith now. Want to finish him off? They have the damage. They get the kill. Another pick. The power of that early Blightstone. Combined with the Swarm, some heavy minus armor. And all the while, applying pressure mid too. LFY, just every movement has a purpose. And yeah. every movement achieving a goal. Whether it's a kill, whether it's a tower, a ward. And this is during daytime. <laughs> the next nighttime's coming soon. Right. It, they're, they're not like the Weaver's building Lincolns. He's not trying to go for some big damage. Oh, they, they even go for Kaka. They've got dust ready. In flame is on point. The team firing on all cylinders as they're going to force him back. But here comes the rotation from KP. They go for the sprout play. Still diving him. That minus armor is substantial. Oh, the heal, though. Quite enough. And now Faith looks for the turret. The casket bouncing. 
And he will end up going down while that was happening though. Dire Courier will bite the dust. So a small sacrifice here. Monet? At the altar. Sunstrike coming in, but Monet stands his ground. He's able to time lapse it off, and now Kitsukuchi forward in just a moment. He can look for the Sanke kill. Kaka almost dead. One more auto attack secures the kill, and as Triple C needs to answer back, but Super is there and very tanky. Looks like the Weaver has the TP. He'll make it out, but they do sacrifice their Medusa. A pretty high price to pay. Two beefy cores down. All they got were some supports, so their first blunder as LFY get cocky. Yeah, they get they lose all of their cores, right? They lose the Dusa, they the, lose the, the Prophet. Weaver TP. Okay, Weaver TP out, but still, that's a big win for newbie. We were saying that you know, they need to be surgical with their kills. Well, when they're brought to you on a silver platter in front of your tier three, 12 minutes in the game, we take those. Behold, newbie's master plan: get crushed early, and then LFY will get sloppy. <laughs> yeah, put them in a false sense of security, man. So, where, how are we looking? Are there any key items close? KP's blink is nearby. Only 500 gold or so to go. But LFY still on the hunt, still playing aggressive kill Dota. They're yep. gonna look for Faith now, has the teleport scroll. Coming in, Nature's Prophet on a bouncing quick TP. Don't think they'll bring him down in time, but it'll be close. Oh, a second later, he would have been done for. Yep. Inflame has gone for the drums build I mentioned. Looks like he is gonna be going for kind of he's gonna play the temple controller for the team. He understands that he's got the weaver, he's got the the Dusa. They're gonna ultimately carry the late game. He just needs to get them to the late game. And his item build would be nice for that. Do you like uh do you like the decision by S Triple C to just go with the standard Quas Exhort Midas? As opposed to maybe considering something different, like with the early Quas Wex? I think when you go Quaswex, it's more of a team decision, right? If you go Quaswex, the whole team needs to fight with you. And with heroes like Puck and Sand King, yes, they can fight early, but they're not fighting now because they need the blink. Meanwhile, in the river, somebody's fighting. It's going to be Invoker going in. Bad time for KP to die, though. He's close to the blink. He gets the Night Stalker, but he will end up going down. Actually, still has most of his gold, so I guess it was largely all reliable. As Kaka will go down to the Mystic Seed. Now the Stone Gaze forcing Newbie away. You know, a lot of people view Medusa as a hero that just needs to farm all game, but Super demonstrating that Medusa can take the fights early and be a big force. Yep, got the Dragon Lance, a very good stat item. Gonna go for a Hurricane Pike. Small standard pieces. And he, like you said, is fighting hard. So they got the blink on Puck now. Sand King blink in the quick buy. Still a long way to go for that. As far as our Chaos Knight goes, it's an armlet straight into an Echo Saber, so... Standard stuff for him. Very standard, very mid-game focus timing for him. Invoker will be that late-game insurance. But Newbie are starting to accrue the items and abilities, the levels they need to yep. take that next round of engagement. So I expect, especially once this night ends, that they are going to really increase the pressure they're applying. Problem is, they're doing it with a significant map control deficit, as LFY have taken over their jungle, and they've taken those two crucial towers around the Roche pit. Yep, the tier one mid, the tier one top. But I think uh, once you have double blink daggers, a lot of a lot of it changes. Uh, the question is, once those blink, blink dagger online, how will LFY respawn? I think the correct response is just to group up. I, I think it's so hard to fight into the stone gaze, um, and we'll see if uh, LFY end up doing that. Because Medusa sits in the front, does he really care about blink burrow strike or blink dream coil? I think right now they can probably kill the Dusa if they literally throw everything at her. Like Maledict, the, the Invoker combo with the Sunstrike, Burrow Strike Epi, and the whole Puck complement of spells. And to be fair, there's no other save for the Dusa, so, or reset. Um, but they have to throw everything at her, and, and God the, forbid yeah. you don't kill her, the fight right. is over. As a Radiant Scan will detect Newbie yep. rummaging through the LFY jungle, they're gonna. Move towards the pit, they're afraid of a potential Roche sneak. And now they look to break high ground, but Monet is there. He breaks it and runs away. So that first movement with the KP blink comes up empty. I don't know whether they saw whether he had the blink or not yet. The Night Stalker is coming in too. It is pretty like late in the game for a puck not You would expect it so. to, to have it at this time, yeah. Kaka getting clipped here by the Swarm, now lifted back. And with that, the Sandstorm stolen. Hoping the Burrow Strike would be used as he cast it, but nonetheless a kill again. Just running through these newbie backlines and cleaning up support heroes. Yep, that's two kills. When LFY. is newbie gonna fight? 
Well, they're trying to. It's just that Elf Y is being at right place at the right time. They they cut them off. They break the smoke gang. Elf will also activate darkness at the at the time that the smoke gang came. So newbie just got spooked. You try to walk up a hill, your smoke breaks, and darkness gets activated on the other side. You're, You're like, like, oh shit. Yeah, like they just have vision on me. It's like I gotta gotta run, and then they just get picked off because Elf Y are more mobile with a global TP. Oh, Mugi comes in. Okay, he pops the ultimate, and he's going for the kill. Where do you go, Rubik? Mugi's gonna pour it out. There's no way to cancel this TP because Rubik is dead. All right. Finally, someone makes a play for Newbie. It's been yeah. a quiet start to the game. Although, with that said, items are still piling in. Monet has secured a very quick timing on his Lincoln Sphere. With that, the Dusa also going straight for the Ags now, it looks like. Grab the point booster. So, with that coming online and a bigger scale team fight, Cast Knight will be very hamstrung in terms of what he can do. Still waiting for Newbie to really find their opening. Kaka's blink yep. extremely slow. You know what his normal timing on blink like is? 15 minutes. 15 minutes. <laughs> and we're probably looking at like a 23, 24 minute blink, yeah, unless they have a big team fight right. soon. It might come right now here. Newbie smoked up again. Right as daytime uh, begins and that darkness ends, they try to make their move. They're going to pincer this top tower, try to lay down a ward. Faith will get the vision. I think that spot DDC here could be an opening. DDC suspects something. That smoke is about to end. The creep Wicked wave is coming. Dives into the trees. He's going to hide. He jukes them out. He baits them. And now they look for the turn. The Weaver's on the hunt. And he does have the Lincoln Spear. So he's really not the hero you want to initiate on. Medusa coming in as well. Drops the snake. The tower down to SCCC. So the objective's there. Now they just want to escape. Coil deployed defensively. Orbing back to safety. Moving on lift. the high ground. Lift. They have the lift. Yes, sir. E. DDC gets pushed up by the Hurricane Pike of Super. That's teamwork, folks. And now they'll find the Chaos Knight. They'll take Kaka as well. Meanwhile, on the, the right side. Aid, they're Afu. also diving Faith. Afu just munching down on that tasty witch doctor a vampire's dream he'll claim the third kill of the fight somehow and flame got it wrath of nature chaos there we go it's got a double off of that and now roshan is happening that was just so crisp like the way super four step ddc up they had about a quarter second there to react and time it right yep before he passed in the wrong direction they knew he was going for the tp ddc had Stolen. He was gonna get there on his own anyways, but the, the style point, you know, with the teamwork for staff. Mm. Mm, indeed. And yeah. LFY. This looks like a 10-0 team, Lumi. Yeah, like They're playing newbie. Newbie is the second best team in their group by record so far. It, it's just the way they're winning. They're winning with Weaver and Dusa in the early game, right? That that is just out scaling. They're also winning with Inflame play Nature's Prophet, where coming in, like, he was almost always on just a tempo controller offlane. Mm -hmm. Felt very restricted in terms of the play style. Like, they mixed it up a lot with the NP for him. We saw the Doom earlier in the tournament. Uh-oh, Kaka. Gonna get caught in mid lane here. Invis, Night Stalker, popping out with Crippling Fear. It's and starting to fear. look like a route. LFY, all the signs that they are just gonna run rough shot over Newbie. Now continuing to munch on Faith. Tries to deal with it but can't withstand the damage. And simultaneously in the bottom lane, the Puck forced the TP away as Monet just keeps on pushing. He really wants to cut down these creeps, limit the momentum. LFY just rampaging towards their next kills. Already Afu, he's setting up the next gank. And that is really what I think is the hallmark of Afu's playstyle is he's never thinking about the kill in front of them. He's thinking about the next kill and yep. the next opportunity to have one. For sure. I kind of compared him to Zhao Wei, which is their previous, uh position four player at the beginning of the year. And I think he's playing better than Zhao Wei, which is saying a lot uh, in terms of what Zhao Wei has done for you know the Chinese community in the past. There will, well, there will be no redemption tour for Zhao Wei for CI. Everyone's always wondering, you know, how's he going to get in this time? <laughs> you know, when uh, Resolution needed a carry player, that was the calling, dude. Oh, Empire, Empire you <laughs> mean? Sorry, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I said Resolution needed a carry player. He was, he became the carry player. Perhaps a bit of a language barrier there. No, it's fine. Dota is the only language we need. Dota, the international language. You need somebody there, you ping. Ping, ping, ping. <laughs> and then... Painting is the international language. Yeah. That, that I agree with. You got the chat wheel, you know? It's fine. So Dusa Ag's complete. LFY, a big tool in their arsenal now to continue 
taking more and more aggressive team fights. It's such a fast timing for it too. And again, what's crazy is not like, oh, the timing of the item, but the way they're getting them, where they're they're not just farming. They're constantly fighting with a Dusa, you know, with a Weaver and winning those fights convincingly. Yep. Now, before we focus too much on what Alpha is doing correctly and, and they're great and all that stuff, 10 and 0 team, Newbie, I feel like they are doing the, the necessary thing. They're sending smoke ganks repeatedly into the enemy jungle, looking for a pick, trying to get towers on the back of those picks. It's just not connecting. It, it also doesn't help that Kaka still doesn't have the blink dagger. One thing Newbie is really not lacking when you look at their draft is vision. They don't have a good vision hero, unless you yep. want to count like Forge Spirits. Uh, whereas LFY have the Nature's Prophet Treance, they have nice Night Stalker, Stalker most yeah. importantly. I think Vision has been a massive part of this game. You can also look at the warding setup that they've deployed after winning Movie. those fights. Bottom side here, getting wrecked here by Monet at this point. Tornado. Sprout. Tornado comes in to try and interrupt this combo. Monet will get back to safety, but the threat is there. Yep. LFY continuing to push in all three lanes near constantly. Slow siege begins on the mid lane. A part of the vision is that your support are just super poor when you're down by 13k. Faith is just having trouble buying his own items and, and keeping ward and, and counter ward up. Continuing to chip away at this tier 3 mid. LFY already looking to try and put an end to this game and cap it off with their 11th victory. Not quite there yet, but certainly on the uh -oh. warpath as the Rubik. Bell Steel comes out, double EMPs potentially could turn this fight. LFY are going to be forced back for the time being. They did commit their Stone Gaze, so the Stone Gaze down, the Nature's Prophet ult expended. They decide to be content with what they've achieved here and back away. Yeah, that was a little bit rough for LFY. They went up the high ground and three of their heroes ate an EMP tornado. And I don't think there's too many Arcane Boots on the team. Rubik being uh, having the only pair, so once you get hit by EMP tornado, you a lot of your mana is just out. Time to go back. No hurry, if you're off Y. All these heroes scale pretty well, mm -hmm. I would say. I wouldn't count Newbie out completely, even though none of their smoke ganks have been connecting, you know, even though perhaps they don't scale as well. If th those ganks do start to connect, uh, Newbie can't make the comeback, but blinks in, lifts them up after the sentry. Kaka trying to burrow out, but the last long range right click of Monet will take him down. Monet is unafraid, now purging up Moogie, going straight for a big kill. He commits on the Chaos Knight. Won't be able to finish him off, but definitely feeling confident. CKP just continuing bottom lane to cut these waves, constantly trying to slow down any sort of push from Newbie. But it is those gor guerrilla warfare tactics that they yep. are forced to resort to now. There, there is a lot of spike burst damage potential coming out from newbie squad. Uh, you have the Maledict, you have the Chaos Knight, obviously, with his ultimate. But moving forward, I don't know how long his illusions will be able to survive, especially in the light of the Aghanim Scepter uh, Mystic Snakes that will be coming out from Super. Heck, even the Wrath of Nature will, will do a number on the illusions. Here comes yet another smoke from newbie. I think that might be one of their last few smokes they've been turning through them. And they're all difficult to execute smokes because the lanes are pushing the deep ward. Oh, he misses it, Coil. But they still try to make their move. Nonetheless, the lift comes in, interrupting this chain of initiation. And now the turn with the swarm there. Newbie are on the run. Faith wants to TP out. Looks like he should make it. Not so lucky, perhaps, is Kaka. But with that Casca bouncing, they are forced to just stone gaze. That will ultimately net them the Kaka kill. Two down, Coil expended. The Chaos Knight also committed. Yeah, I and think that it's high does ground. mean it's high ground time. Yeah, they're not even close to killing any of these guys. Yeah, the Coil did miss, but I think if the Coil hit on Monet, he still would have been fine. His team was there. Now Purge going on SC. He's going to go invis and away. EMP Tornado did hit on Super, but there is that one pair of Arcane Boots to juice him up. And they just don't care. They're, they're going to just run over this tier 3 and perhaps even the Rax. Blinks in, lift the Witch Doctor, and that should be another easy freebie. Okay, Burrow Strike. Pretty decent. Picks up a Rubik kill. Looking for more, potentially. 
Still working on the Rex though. Melee starting to drop. Monet, commitment here from him. The Deuce is low in mana. With the CMP, it's going to be almost completely gone. Now they burrow her. They could try to focus her down. Super with the Hurricane Pike pushback. He keeps himself away from the Epicenter. Stays alive. All the while focusing on objectives on the Rex. But he is going to forfeit his life in doing so. And the Melee's not dead yet. Okay. And rare overextension. Wow. Oh, boy. Get cocky again. And this time, a huge punish. They Kevin finished the oh. Rex. It's down to barely an HP. You couldn't even see that light red sliver. But now healing itself up. Newbie, not out of it yet. Yeah, they went for the... Remember, it was EDC starting things off, blinking in for the very easy Witch Doctor kill, but came in. The Burrow Strike from Kaka was huge getting two. And it, I think there was a bit of indecision uh, on the team as we're going to watch this fight one more time. They went in quickly, killed the Witch Doctor, and it's after this kill where half their team gets Burrow Strike. It's like, what do we do? Do we keep on fighting here or do we hit the building? You see the cores are trying to go hit the building. The rest of the team is disengaging. And it's this indecision that will ultimately cost them a whole bunch of kills. Afu's just out of there already. And now DDC quickly picks up another on KP. Nicely done. Newbie, signs of life. With that invoker, for the first time this game, I want to say, is atop the net worth chart. As Triple C, one of the strongest invokers in the world. Certainly someone to be feared. We've already seen earlier in this tournament what someone on his level like Miracle can do with a late game invoker in his hands. And yeah, level Triple 20. C equally capable on the hero. Okay, going to keep you out here. No disable in time. Make it back to safety now. A level 25 invoker is one of those things where, like, even I'm really far behind, I'm getting my high ground siege. If I have a, a talented invoker player and he's 25, I always feel like I have a chance. And I think that's the exact spot that newbie is in right now. Even though they made a miraculous defense on their mid racks, and it's regening very fast, um, that racks is likely going to go down soon. Sizable lead for LFY that they've accrued here. About 14k net worth advantage. Experience a little more manageable around the 10k range. But now with the tier 3 down, they can go back for Shrine. So they try uh -oh. to cinch up the match, map control a bit further as they take that Shrine down. And meanwhile, in the mid lane, Kaka also picked off. Good rotation from the LFY roving gank party. And now Shrine number 2 on the menu. Newbie are starting to get a bit bottled up. Yeah, it, it really honestly doesn't matter how many high ground base defense you make successfully if you just keep giving up random kills. This is like the second or third time I've seen um, the Sankin getting picked off. KP has been struggling outside. Granted, it's tough. You, you talked about the vision disparity between the two teams, right? It's nice talker, profit trees everywhere. At the same time, it's something that Yubi needs to do better on uh, oh, to have a chance. This might just be the trump card. They have double BKB now. Newbie and have they just Newbie have nothing on BKB. They yeah. have no damage. The Chaos Knight Illusions won't be a factor with Stone Gaze and the Mystic Snake Eggs. And all their nuke damage is going to be completely negated. So unless they can somehow either bait the BKBs out or chain stun the Dusa and the Weaver from 100 to 0 before they pop BKBs, this fight is extremely low percentage. They have to do that twice because of HS and Chiefs. Yes. I mean, I hate to, to make it sound hopeless, but it should be hopeless if LFY play this right. I think this is actually a complete trump card. Well, we've seen... But never say never in Dota. Yeah, we've seen the impossible has happened before. EMP Tornado will start things off. Dusa will eat it. It's a good start, getting rid of most of her mana. Now jumping in on the Weaver, they ideally want to kill someone off once, not commit too much, and then in round two, really go for the big plays. But Monet quickly BKBs, eyes on the prize, trying to focus down that melee Rex, but then turning back for heroes. Who will they get? They take down S Triple C, instant buyback from him. It's all in on this fight. The Stone Gate comes through, locking Nubi in position, pummeling Monet, forcing him on his heels. The epicenter just tickles. Kaka next on the list. Melee Rex down. Faith getting battered as Monet continues to lay into him. Finally, the Aegis pop, but it's a triple for the Weaver, the bug that could, and now looking for more as Triple C, die back on the horizon, has to get back to safety, lobs out the Sunstrike, oh, oh. will barely survive, the Rubik was fishing for him, but still, the racks are down, his own Sunstrike also just whiffing. 
and LFY get what they came for. And that was the defense, I believe, two buybacks were used. KP definitely used his. I think CK used his in the one earlier. They, Despite of that, they still lose a team fight. And yeah, like you said, it's the ultimate trump card. It did took LFY more resource than I thought they needed, but... And that speaks to how good uh, Newbie has been defending. But ultimately, it's not close to enough. And LFY is going to just rinse and repeat. They'll get the items. They'll wait for nighttime again. And they'll come for a Rax. That's Triple C. Can do little but admire LFY. Gives them a nice round of applause. Or maybe applauding their own futile attempt, man. That they, or it's the sarcastic clap for his own <laughs> team, perhaps. Nah, I got trying to keep me out, but that Stone Gaze. Where'd you at? Yeah. Sorry, not Stone Gaze, the Stone Mystic Snake. Meanwhile, it's going to be TP out here, and he makes it home. Oh, close call. Did commit yeah. the Stone Gaze for that, but Moogie barely surviving. While meanwhile, SCCC is on the hunt in his own right, trying to corral Afu. The Night Stalker has been dealt with, silenced and finished off. A one for one, four position trade. Stone Gaze down. Might be a time where LFY want to play it safe, but they say, no, sir. We are going high ground and we are doing it now. Tier three being rapidly brought down. S Triple C, remember, no buyback for him. Does have to mind his positioning as DDC lunges in, gets the lift, gets the pullback, forces him away. Inflame comes in with the BKB Orchid, but a head full of steam, wanting to corral him. He's going to uh, at least initially lock down Faith. Commits for this. The BKB does the trick. Down goes the Witch Doctor. No buyback for 30. In comes the Sand King, but to what end? Will he have the follow-up damage? There's an Epicenter ready. He's not even bothering. S Triple C trying to take the man fight. That's not one that a shitty wizard can win. Down he goes too. And GG the call. LFY, an unblemished 11-0. An ultra kill for Monet. Just the cherry on top. A game where you look, it's not the draft. It's just purely the execution, and they out-executed the bejesus out of Newbie. It, the game was not close. It, was there anything like that jumps out to you as like a big thing they could have done differently? Because I just, I honestly feel like everything was so solid from LFY. I don't know where you start. Not necessarily differently, but Kaka had no impact this game. Starting from minute zero, he tried to go mid to help out his mid. Afu was there the whole time. Uh, he just mirrored the Sand King. The Sand King's blink dagger got so delayed. Um, I guess looking for game two, that is an adjustment. Figure out how you could outplay Afu in the four position Rome game. Maybe you ban his Night Stalker and his Earth Spirit, you know, or maybe you take yeah. that Night Stalker first. I do think, the, probably for me, the biggest thing that was lacking and became increasingly apparent the more the game went on is they need something to give them vision, whether it's a hero like Batrider, a Night Stalker, maybe even a Clockwork. Like they literally had nothing. I don't even think you can count Forge Spirit sure. or, or the Puck Orb. So. I mean, if you're playing against LFY, it's either that or you also have to somehow deny them their vision heroes. Vision is very necessary when you're far behind, but let's say if you, let's say Newbie won the early game. Let's say they were ahead. Then I think new vision perhaps is not as important. It's always good. Don't so get me wrong. So if it's not vision, then they have to have a dominating early game. Exactly, basically. yeah. All right. Well, Play better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just do better, Newbie. Yeah. We know you can. And certainly they're capable of it, but with this loss, they dropped to six and three. They're still very much in the running for that top four finish, but. They'll need to at least take a game here off of LFY to stop LFY from their undefeated trip to TI. We'll be back after this for game two.